Ted Bennett and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Aquifer. In this particular video, I'm going to show you a little bit about what I do in the evaluation or design of a submersible sanitary sewer pump station. I know, it sounds riveting, but I'm going to use a software called Pipeflow and there's a couple of tricks that I learned doing these things the hard way and having them not compute. So I hope you like this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. And if you wish to, give me any comments. And with that, let's get into the demo. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna build a very simple model using pipe flow. And what we're gonna model is a um, submersible pump system that you might find in a sanitary sewer collection system. Um, when I first started designing pump stations, this is pretty much what I designed uh, like as a starting out engineer, pretty basic system, a couple hundred gallons a minute. Um, and I still do a lot of these. You know, there's so many of these out in these collection systems that um, you're gonna do a ton of these as a designer. And so first thing you'll wanna do is make sure you've got your calculation uh, settings right. So you can click on the white space, kind of get away from like uh, some kind of device that you might be clicked on. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna see out here is you're gonna see the calculation method. And I've always done mine uh, using Hayes and Williams ever since I got made fun of in front of thousands of people at a conference for raising my hand and saying that I used Darcy Weisbach because that's what they taught us in school. Uh, anyways, uh, real engineers generally out in collection systems use Hayes and Williams. It's accurate enough for what we do. Uh, bear in mind that all of these models are not going to give you exact numbers. So uh, I went ahead and entered the pump data so you didn't have to watch me do that. And I've got the tank entered here. You'll get a tank by clicking on this um, chooser over here and then entering it. So you've got your tank. You need to put in an elevation for the bottom. And uh, let's pretend like I'm pulling these from uh, like record plans because we're building a system that exists and we're gonna we're gonna check it. Uh, if you're building something new, it would be the same. And so I'm gonna say five feet for the tank, the uh, submergence there. Um, that way I've got some water over my pump and I'm not going to pull a vacuum, uh, violate any NPSH issues. So we've got our tank in. Uh, this being submersible, I usually just use a short, a real short pipe uh, to um, simulate that. And let's see, fluids on water. This will get you every single time. You have to choose that for every device that you have in here. It's kind of a pain, whatever. Every software has its things that are sort of just that way. Uh, so there's our, our pipe. It's coming in. This is pretty cool. Like you're getting your areas and it's going to do your uh, C factor for you. Uh, let's go ahead and put in um, uh, entrance loss. It's not a big deal. Um, sharp edge. There's our 0.5. Uh, we're adding it. There it is. Boom. Done. Um, so now we've got our pump. Let's take a look at that. I'll show you what I've done there. Uh, pretty simple. These are pretty fun uh, to build. Oops. Let's go here and enter pump data. <clears throat> so here you go, this is your pump. This is what you're gonna get from your pump manufacturer. Um, a lot of times I'll build this out first just to get an idea, uh, like I've done here, sort of a you know test case. I know what flow I want. I can kind of play around a little bit. Um, so I've pre-entered flow in, a flow and head curve. You can get this from your, your pump supplier, or like I said, here you can build something sort of generic just to get an idea of what you're looking at. Uh, let's just say we're going to run at 950 RPMs with a 7 inch diameter impeller. I'll usually put my manufacturer here. Is it Flight? Is it Gorman Rub? Is it, you know, Barnes? You know, whatever. And then, then I'll put the actual, like, model number. All the numbers and letters that go along with that pump. Good to keep that up to date. We've had problems before going back and forth and trying to figure out which pump we're using. Also, there you go. Min and max speed. Uh, you can play around with the speed. Uh, in the, the model here, and then you can also change your you know diameter to get different sized impellers. So here we go. Uh, we're going to say OK with that. We'll accept that. Um, just like I was talking about, you can change the speed here, um, you know, hertz or RPM or whatever. We're just going to go at 950 for now. Um, so that pretty much is all we need on our pump. I did put an elevation for suction and discharge. And basically that is residing down at the bottom of the wet well. Let's go ahead and just put it a foot off the bottom. I don't know. It's not going to make a huge difference. These devices are pretty dumb. So you got to be real careful uh, to, to make sure that you don't make a mistake because the software is not going to make, it's not going to catch your errors for you. So we're drawing a pipe. I'm going to left click to put a bend on it. I'm going to double click to get a node. And let's go ahead and just run this out to our manhole. There we go. And 
let's see, let's put our manhole in. And I kind of like to try to work like one way or the other, like through the system, like clicking on each each um, object so that I'm not like making a mistake. So here's our manhole at the upper end. We'll say it's 675. Surface pressure is zero. It's not a, like a pressure vessel or nothing. Uh, liquid level, we'll say one foot. And ah, got to get it. Got to check that water uh, fluid zone because that's something I forget every single time. All right, so here's our force main. This is probably the key component that's going to make a lot of difference on our head. Um, it's going to be C900 DR18, and it is going to be 8 inch. Um, there's our flow area already populated. We'll say it's 1500 feet long. Um, and we'll go ahead and throw an exit loss in just for fun. Uh, it won't make a huge difference, but I'll go ahead and add that. Uh, and, our, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of engineers will go back and forth. You put the fittings on the force main in here. You know, I do, uh, generally, if I know where they are. So we'll go ahead and throw in a couple 45s. A lot of my clients like 45s. And uh, you can either do that and like just do it a different, a different time. So let's say there's like five of them. You can just put five and just add, boom, done. So that's sort of helpful. You know, it, it makes your model a little bit better. Um, do, does it really make a huge difference? No. Uh, you really won't notice one way or the other. And I've seen models built both ways. Uh, so there you go. We've got our, I got our, Force main in. This is going to be on on the upper end, right in our right in our valve chamber. And so we're going to say this is like a 630. So our, our ground our pipe is like 30 feet above above our um, well well bottom. That seems pretty reasonable. And uh, last piece of the puzzle here, uh, we'll go ahead move some of this text around. We'll go ahead and enter this. This is probably the most fun part. It has the most information to enter uh, water uh, again. And we'll go ahead and use ductile iron pipe here. And we'll say, I don't know, 8 inch, uh, match the force main, try to cut down on the head loss. You'll see that it doesn't make a huge difference. We'll go ahead and make this 40 feet long. We'll say we've got a little bit of a, a run and we've got to get out of the ground anyway. So let's see here. Uh, check valve in, swing check angle. That's a pretty standard unit. You can go to a manufacturer and get uh, real K values uh, for these as well. Let's throw in a couple of 90s just for the bends getting out of the wet well. Let's say there's like, let's say there's like four of those. And let's see, what else are we going to need? You might have a T, a T, like a flow through a uh, branch. Let's go ahead and add one of those in because we're probably going to have two pumps on a pump station like this. And let's see, let's put a plug valve in. Uh, most of the folks that I work with like to use plug valves. Uh, instead of like gate valves on um, sanitary sewer pump stations. So there you go. You've got a pretty good collection of, of some uh, fittings. You've got a total K value of 5.5. And if we have a pretty reasonable velocity, you know, it's still not going to do much at K times V squared divided by uh, 2G. Uh, we'll go ahead and see that when we run it. Look at this. It's already populated it for us. And here we are. We're at the end of the road. Uh, already so quickly, um, the pumps are running at uh, 950 RPMs and delivering 900 or uh, 393 gallons a minute at 77 feet. Uh, we got a pretty good velocity of uh, two and a half feet per second in our force main, so we're gonna we'll do all right. We'll clear it out pretty good. We might want to, you know, bump up the the velocity a little bit there, but all in all, you can see we've built our very first model. Uh, in pipe flow in future uh, videos we will uh, try some different stuff and I can show you guys some problems that I've come across or some challenges so, so there uh, you go there's how you build a model using pipe flow I hope you liked the video again hit the thumbs up button post any comments and have a great day